Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> bro. Oh, bro. I can't believe you put this in the video. <laughs> yes. Bro, you you're so you're super solid for that, bro. That was you made my you made my day. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back out again with another video. So we got an interesting one. Reigns versus Lesnar, the never-ending saga. You guys have been asking me to check this out by none other than Superkick Studios. So that's what I'm doing right now. Some of you guys sent it to me on Instagram and Twitter. And some of you guys commented on a few of my vids saying I need to check this out. So that's what I'm here for. We all know Roman and Lesnar. Uh... A lot of us are kind of tired of their one-on-one -on -one bouts or the matches, you know, they've had with other people in it. It's it's like we are we're kind of over it. We were hoping WrestleMania was going to be the last time, but injuries had hit WWE and changed up their plans. So now they went back with the tried and true formula of having Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns main event ahead of a major pay-per-view. Will this match be good? Their last man standing match at SummerSlam? Hopefully it is. I've said in the previous video, there needs to be blood. There needs to be flaming tables. There needs to be attempted murders if we're having a last man standing match. And it's their last match ever going against each other. I need to see some attempted murders. Simple as that. I'm, I'm being so dead serious. If someone's not trying to set someone ablaze or literally try to end their life, I don't want to see it. Simple as that. Just and let's let's just try to go all out. This is y'all last time going at each other and go from there. So we'll see what he has to say. Should be interesting. Let's get right into this video. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's do this thing. Not the fight forever chance. This is not that situation. Yeah, these two mm -mm. have taken that chant a little bit too literal, and for the better part of the past eight years, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns have been joined at the hip. This year at SummerSlam, they're set to have their seventh one-on-one -on -one match on pay-per-view, and it's got a lot of fans really tired. There are some, including myself, who are actually excited to see what these two can do in a last man standing match. I think it has potential to be a perfect car crash. But there are people out there who are just really sick and tired of yeah. this repeat cycle. Why you might ask? Well, they're tired of seeing this match main event what seems like every pay-per-view. They've seen it three times at WrestleMania and each time with a progressively worse match in yep. retrospect. The problem that many fans have is not necessarily with Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar as people. The problem is they're not enjoying this copy-paste booking. It seems like for every big pay-per-view where there's a clear other option, WWE runs back to the well with this story. This is very guys, true. The reality some people forget is that this match draws money. No matter how many times it happens, at the end of the day for WWE, that's the goal. To make money. To put butts in the seats at SummerSlam, sell merch, and all the rest. And let me remind you that there was a time where we had two other guys. Cena, Orton. These guys wrestled for what felt like... And this is very true. They did the same thing. They did the same thing. And they're doing the same thing here with... Roman and Brock. Like forever. And now there's people out there clamoring for just one more match. So hey man, one thing I've learned in wrestling is to just enjoy things while you have them. Nothing lasts forever unless, you know, you're Ric Flair. But yeah. before we analyze the good and the bad in this rivalry up until this point, it's important to see how we got here and the arduous path between these two. Let's go all the way back. Cast your mind back to 2015. The Royal Rumble of that year is where WWE strapped a rocket to Roman Reigns oh. and they wanted to build the next generation of the company with him at the forefront. Coming out of the shield, he was naturally cool, but they gave him a character of basically looking like Super Cena number two. Yeah. And as you'll see later on, characters can really make or break stories. Mm -hmm. He won the Royal Rumble and even got big time endorsement from The Rock, but it wasn't enough. Fans hijacked that night and <laughs> you might ask why. Well, it was too much too soon. They didn't like the direction of the character and he himself didn't exude qualities of a guy who was ready at this point. This he was athletic, very true. he had the look, 
but he just didn't seem ready. Add to that that Daniel Bryan, who a lot of fans wanted in the main event, was cast aside a year after he won the big one at Mania. But nonetheless, Reigns was going to face Brock at WrestleMania 31 in the main event. Brock had captured the WWE title off John Cena at SummerSlam 2014 after his historic win against The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. The basis for this story was the young gun versus the veteran, and what didn't help their cause heading into WrestleMania is that on the go-home, they had a tug-of-war for the WWE title. Regardless, it was a fresh new matchup that we hadn't seen before. Going in, there was next to no expectation for this. It was basically like, all right, give Roman the title and move on. But they uh, Yeah, a lot of people, even me, I thought, well, they're clearly giving the title to Roman Reigns. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know this is about to happen. They're about to boo him out of the building. This is what's going to happen. But boy, were we wrong. And surprisingly, that was one of the best switcheroos they have ever done oh it was so good they exceeded all expectations and they turned what many believed would be a dud into an all-time main event the match no, it was, it was fan. a it was a great drag out fight it was Brock a great match going around roman roman countering with his explosiveness and power but that main event is mostly remembered for what michael cole coined the heist of the century yep. seth rollins came out cashed in his money in the bank and it wasn't Brock, it wasn't Roman, it was Seth Rollins who walked out the WWE World Great moment. Champion. This finish was pretty crazy considering that it looked like Roman was going to get the win. His dad, Sika, even wanted him to quit the WWE because of this finish. Reigns had about wow, 50 really? family members in attendance that night, and the plan was for him to win the WWE title, get his crowning moment. But midway through the show, those plans changed, and wow. it resulted in Roman's dad reportedly being ready to start a war. Damn, I didn't know none of that. I knew they changed it because I knew originally it was going to be Roman getting his moment. But they changed it during the show. This was one of those hot shot bookings that actually worked. It worked. Oh, my God, it worked. And a war is what this match was. The higher ups were probably as stunned as we were as to just how well these two meshed together. And for Vince McMahon, he'd found a formula that would lead him into the next generation Roman and Brock. But here began a problem that we've seen before the recycle cycle, where you mm -hmm. find a formula that works, and to avoid building up a new and refreshing story, you go back to the well and you continue a few that Too many exhausted times. all aspects of it already. In turn, not only annoying the fan base, but having a ripple down effect on the rest of the roster. And as you'll see later on in this video, it's not a good effect. A cycle that we've seen with the likes of Randy Orton and John Cena, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, more recently Sasha Banks and Charlotte, and for WWE, they just haven't been able to get out of this holding pattern. This was the catalyst for what we have today. And as much as this rivalry is ragged on, there's been points of this story that have been absolutely fantastic. Anyways, through 2015, the company cooled it with Roman Reigns, and come early 2016, Roman's push was in full swing again. The mm -hmm. next time Brock and Roman would meet would be in the main event of Fastlane 2016, this time with Dean Ambrose in the mix as well. This was a number one contenders match to see who'd face Triple H for the WWE title. This one was won by Roman, but he pinned Dean to do so. So Roman was going to WrestleMania 32. He ended up winning that match. Lesnar remained busy with the likes of... And that wasn't a bad match. I, I enjoyed that match for what it was. It was actually kind of enjoyable. Well, not even kind of. It was, it was pretty enjoyable. It's just you knew what they were doing. I honestly really wish they would have gave Dean Ambrose the rub here at the time, but that will come at a later point. But you knew what they were doing. Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, and Goldberg through 2016 and early 2017. It was at WrestleMania 33 where Brock beat Goldberg for the Universal title. It was that same Universal title where these two would meet again, this time in a multi-man match featuring Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman. The story this time was simple. All four men were going after each other. They couldn't determine a number one con- This, the build up to this was great. The match itself, was great this was a summer slam match i love this match i loved it oh my god this was fun it was just a car crash this was fun still think brock should have shot the title then to at least samoa joe or braun Strowman. but you know you know how that go they were you know how that go 
contender so this was thrown together this is fun and this match was a beautiful car crash this is so this fun match. near falls carnage a huge emphasis on power throughout the match each man having their time to shine and again it was brock who came out on top pinning roman reigns shoulders to the mat here brock would basically go into retreat with ross top prize brock was filling his obligations as a part-time performer he only had to show up a select number of dates so the company leaned into the story for the next year's wrestlemania mercenary versus hero roman won the elimination chamber giving him a universal title match at wrestlemania 34 the second these two would meet in a wrestlemania main event the story was simple brock never showed up and roman was gonna fight to bring the title back to raw the company continued to position roman reigns as a conquering it still didn't work i just want you guys to understand no matter what they did it did not work for roman it's just we saw through it we saw we weren't seeing the true guy. We were seeing what WWE wanted us to see. And we could see right through that bull crap. No, Roman. We didn't want you as the, the squeaky clean baby face. We wanted, we like the Roman that's there to kick some ass, beat people up. That's the Roman we, the Roman we got now. That's what we wanted. Hero where the clear direction was for him to play the bad guy. Upon a rewatch, you can see that in 2018, he's improved a ton on the mic, but his one fatal flaw was the audience's reception towards him. There were still fans who just didn't buy him as a good guy yet. This was something that added fuel to the ongoing dislike for this rivalry. It was basically like, all right, you're giving us a copy paste of a match that we saw two years ago. Meanwhile, this guy is basically being shoved down our throats. And don't get that twisted. Some people, they loved Roman. Oh, yeah. For a majority, it seemed like a split. The push for him to play a bad guy was really heavy. And I tell you this because it becomes important as the story wears it into the present day. definitely does. So they have Roman handcuffed. What's up, Ricky Starks? The really yeah. <laughs> the fact that the entire roster wants Brock dethroned as champion and they respect Roman. Roman gets suspended for calling Lesnar Vince's boy. And they tried to build sympathy for Reigns by he did, having Mark. him as the guy who, even while he was suspended, he would just show up like a badass. It, it kind of work. worked, kind of didn't. I it guess didn't. it depends on how it you see really it. It did really work. Going into WrestleMania, fans expected Roman to stand tall for a third straight Mania, having beat Triple H and Undertaker at the past two. But to our surprise, the winner was Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. News it came out that Lesnar was looking for a UFC return and his contract was going to expire, but he instead re-signed. This match seemed pretty awkward at points. Also, the crowd seemed to give a very minimal reaction to they big spots care. and there were loud boos throughout the match. It just seemed like people didn't really care. Brock won with a 6th F5, leaving Reigns bloodied and Raw without a full-time champion. Just 19 days later, a rematch would happen at the Greatest Royal Rumble, this time inside a steel cage. And the idea heading in was that if WWE were to have Roman win the title, it would be a bit calmer, I guess you could say, because the Saudi crowd would be more receptive to a Reigns title win. Well, in North America, he'd mm -hmm. probably get booed out of the building. The match clocked in at 9 minutes and 15 seconds and came to an end when Reigns speared Brock through a panel of the steel cage. Reigns' feet clearly touched first, but Lesnar was awarded the win. <laughs> yeah, that they definitely botched that. <laughs> clearly his feet hit first, but they... Ooh, no, it didn't happen. Now, there was even more confusion, frustration, and a lack of apathy for a lot of wrestling fans. A lot of them were just sick and tired of this repeat cycle. These two would meet for a third and final time in 2018, <sighs> this time at SummerSlam. They continued this thread of painting Brock as the guy who used his contract to never show up, having Raw revolve around Brock and Roman. That's crazy, another SummerSlam with these motherfuckers main event. That's crazy. <laughs> Reigns continued to call out Brock, but to no avail. They also teased Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns aligning together after Brock and Paul had an on-screen falling out. The foreshadowing is honestly so crazy. But of course, it was all a ruse. Paul blinding Roman to make the crowd sympathetic towards Roman. We get to Brooklyn for SummerSlam, and right as the bell is about to ring, Braun Strowman comes out and he says he's going to cash in the Money in the Bank on the winner. The company used the prospect of a Money in the Bank cash-in to keep the crowd engaged in the mm -hmm. match and make sure that they wouldn't just boo both guys into oblivion because they themselves knew that this would get a negative response from the crowd. Mm -hmm. You go and you watch this, Strowman's reaction is thunderous. I'm pretty sure nobody wanted either of these guys. When he came out there, they all, they, bro, Strowman was so over. By default, they wanted him to win. Please put the title on him. He had the money in the bank. They should have pulled an audible, but you know how that go. As to be champion. 
This match, it was a fast-paced one. Reigns coming out with three Superman punches and two spears before Brock caught the third into a guillotine. And then the crowd erupts into a You Both Suck chance. <laughs> that they were just a little annoyed at seeing this for a third straight time. Roman and Brock each take out Strowman. Brock then flings the contract to the top of the ramp. This was to get Strowman out of the match, and quickly WWE Bro, he ended launched this match that right shit. away. Roman hits a spear, one, two, three. The company cuts out quickly. No cash in, but Reigns has finally done it. Unfortunately, Roman Reigns announced that he had to leave WWE for a while as his leukemia returned. Mm -hmm. These two wouldn't meet again for three years. Now, it's important to remember the dynamic between these two. Roman was always presented as the conquering hero for the people, while Brock was just there to cash a check and be a mercenary. But in 2020, that dynamic changed, and this story, in my opinion, became the most interesting that it had ever been. It definitely got better. When the roles changed, that's when it got the most interesting. Now it's not as interesting only because it's like this should have been done. But when it when Roman became heel and Brock became more of a a cowboy face, like he, he actually seemed like he was having fun, that's when everything changed dynamic wise. For the feud at least. The pandemic rolls around, Brock was basically nowhere to be seen after WrestleMania 36, mm -hmm. WWE was producing shows out of the Thunderdome, and at the end of SummerSlam, Roman returned from a brief hiatus to be with his family, and the prayers of many had finally yes. been answered. Roman Reigns was now a heel. The yes. tribal chief was born, and he really went all in with this. Oh, strong this character so work, good. different presentations, strong storytelling. From the mannerisms to everything in between, he became what many had been clamoring for him to become yes. for years. But arguably the biggest game changer in this entire thing was Paul Heyman, mm -hmm. now in Roman Reigns' corner. The same Heyman who, with the exception of a few years, had managed Brock Lesnar's entire career since 2002. Reigns became universal champion. He had defenses against guys like Edge, Daniel Bryan, Jey Uso, Kevin Owens. And then came the biggest one of them all, John Cena at SummerSlam 2021, mm -hmm. where with one spear, he beat the former face of the company. He had built this amazing star aura to him. Just as he celebrates and SummerSlam is coming to an end, Brock Lesnar came calling. After over a year away, he was back with a new grizzled look, now sporting a ponytail and a different attire. But the biggest difference was motivation. You mm -hmm. saw a more fun-loving, laid-back, no Fs given Brock. And Farmer Brock was something that none of us knew we needed, but something we all love to see. I'm not going to lie to you. Him coming back as this, at first I wasn't sure, but I like, I will say this. Dub probably would not like me for this, but I will say this was probably the most interesting Brock I had ever seen because he was having fun. He can tell he was having a good time. He he didn't care. He was just shooting the shits, man, as they say. Like, he was just having a great time, and you can see it on television, and people were loving it, so. Brock Lesnar was just living his best life. Mm -hmm. He was back to get some answers, and he was back for blood. Now, just like that, a change in this story. Both guys with an undeniable aura and star presence. No whining about being Vince's boys, even though they're both Vince's boys. Mm -hmm. The suspense was all lying around where Paul Heyman's allegiance lied. This was really interesting in my opinion. Was it with Roman or was it with Brock? Mm -hmm. The past or the current? The suspense of this story took turns like Brock asking Paul, why didn't you tell Roman I was going to be at SummerSlam? And then Roman kind of going... Yo, I, I think Paul's a snake. To then reaffirming that Heyman was with Roman, but Brock insisted that Roman was getting played. So it was this flip-flop on the weekly of confusion yeah. that this whole time, Heyman was with Reigns, but it was only a setup until Brock returned. All signs led to Heyman and Brock trying to get one over on Roman, and all three parties involved deserve huge praise. Reigns, Heyman, and Lesnar, they executed this so well. From Heyman's expressions to Reigns' mannerisms, to Brock just having fun. Yeah. <laughs> so when Crown Jewel came, it was a question as to who was walking out the Universal Champion and who Heyman would help. Now, the matches haven't been the best for the most part. Mm -mm. They've delivered some underwhelming duds, 
But this one at Crown Jewel just had a big fight feel around it. It definitely did. I think did. it's the second best one after WrestleMania 31 this, up until this point. I will point. agree. I will the definitely agree. when the ref was out. Heyman threw the title into the middle of the ring, and he says, you know what to do with it. But we don't know who he's talking to. Both guys play tug-of-war with the title. Who says long-term booking is dead? <laughs> gets it, but as he turns, he's caught by the Usos, followed by a championship shot to the face from Roman Reigns. And Reigns gets the win, and he walks out with Heyman. The only thing is, I really wish he would have won clean, but we, and we know why. So they could set up one more match with them at WrestleMania. That's really what it was. To set up one more match at WrestleMania. And granted, he did win clean at WrestleMania, but the he got injured in that match legit. So they had to call an audible. But I, I just always wanted him to beat Brock Lesnar clean. Finally, like in a sense of as a heel. She, to get the job done clean as a heel, if that makes any sense. But this wasn't over just yet. No. Nope. Brock got suspended, and then his suspension was later lifted. And one week, Reigns was gone. <laughs> I the remember WWE that. TV, and Brock and Heyman looked he like they were still F5'd in a him the company played it so up. hard he ripped his pants. That was great. As Heyman two-timing Reigns, showing feelings for Brock. Anyways, later he <laughs> asked, was it him or was it Brock? And Heyman says that he was protecting Reigns from Brock. And to add another shocking turn to this story, Reigns fired Paul Heyman, punching him in the face. They teased a Paul Heyman retirement, and now there was more heightened drama heading mm -hmm. into WWE Day 1. These two were set to main event for the Universal title, and it should be noted that reports emerged that at Day 1, WWE were looking at a finish that would justify a WrestleMania rematch between these two. Mm -hmm. Maybe involvement from Heyman or a completely screwy finish. But the match never ended up happening. Reigns tested positive for COVID-19, yep. throwing the main event into disarray and throwing Brock into the WWE. Because I, I, I do believe they planned on still somehow having it where Brock and Roman were going to main event WrestleMania, regardless if he caught COVID or not. They were going to do something, but he ended up catching COVID and the rest is history. WWE title match. Here he beat Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, and Big E to capture the WWE title. There's no Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> bro! Oh, bro! I can't believe you put this in the video. <laughs> yes! Bro, you you're so you're super solid for that, bro. That was you made my you made my day. You literally made my day with this clip. Oh my god! Oh, like ah, oh, bro, ah, oh, bro. I gotta show the homies this. Thank you for that, bro. That 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 legit just made my day. awesome we started to get really really messy stories started to get sacrificed and some mm -hmm. fans got even more annoyed if that report is to be believed these two were gonna fight for the universal championship regardless it was supposed to be for just the universal title at wrestlemania but now brock also had the wwe title post day one reigns returned and we still hadn't gotten this match Brock made it evident that he wanted title for title. Heyman, after getting tossed aside, went to align with Brock again. Instead, both guys went off to do their own thing at the Rumble, and it should be noted that storyline-wise, there were some hints of Heyman's allegiance still lying with Roman Reigns, mm -hmm. even though he was with Brock. At the Rumble, things in my opinion got really muddy with this storyline. Reigns won his match against Rollins, and later in the night, there was a literal dream match for so many people. Lesnar versus yeah. Lashley. WWE title... But the match was instead used as a bridge to another Reigns versus Lesnar match. Yep. Reigns came in, he asked Heyman for the title. Heyman handed it to him and Lashley took the title off Brock after Reigns interfered. And so quickly, Heyman was back with Roman. 
From a storyline standpoint, this was really rushed. Just a month and a bit ago, they did the turn, and now they accelerated things just to flip-flop back and forth. Mm -hmm. That same night, Lesnar won the Royal Rumble, and he chose to face Roman Reigns for the Universal title, but which before was, that, at the elimination... Which was so... So... Uh, <sighs> <laughs> That's all I can say. In Chamber, Brock won back the WWE title. So basically, WWE got rid of another potential WrestleMania world title feud so that these two could have a winner-take-all match. Mm -hmm. This was now blood for blood. These two, for the third time, would main event WrestleMania. And to put that into perspective, The Rock and Stone Cold, they've had three WrestleMania matches. They've only main evented two of those. So mm -hmm. Brock's playing real life, here comes the pain to get Roman's blood. And this has now exhausted all areas of this storyline. Brock was just living his best life. He was having fun. He was one of the most entertaining parts of WWE. Come WrestleMania, they called this the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. That's not true. Nope. But when we got to this show, this match wasn't a repeat of WrestleMania 31 or even 34. It was the worst one in this trilogy. Yeah. Reigns took the win in what's safe to say a really anticlimactic match. The match actually didn't feature any injuries. The report was that this is exactly how the company wanted things to go down. Regardless, Reigns won and he became... Uh, really? I just find it hard to believe because of the way his shoulder looked, bro. You can tell something was out. I don't know if he was selling it. It's just the way his shoulder looked, it looked like it was knocked out of the socket, bro. Like, it looked like it was dislocated. There's no way you can tell me that's how they wanted that show to end. Because that shit was... That shit was trash. Not, uh, let, me, let me calm down. I wouldn't say it's trash, but for them to hype this up as the biggest main event of all time, that wasn't it, bro. That wasn't it. Came a double champion. And here he basically disappeared with sporadic appearances here and there, now basically leaving WWE without a full-time world champion yep. and essentially holding both titles hostage. One of those appearances would be a title defense against Riddle where he retained and Brock would return again. Yeah. So here we go again. The company has now announced that Brock Lesnar will take on Roman Reigns in a last man standing match for the last time ever right. in the main event of SummerSlam 2022. Again. You already know it's going to be 2050. It's going to be the main event of WrestleMania 65. They're going to have a wheelchair on a pull match for the Championship. These two men are going to do as Sponsored the signature by suggests and go to the end of time. And nothing else is going to happen. Oh, my now, God. Now, jokes aside, this rivalry has its positives and it has its negatives. I like to give you guys both sides and leave it up to you to form your own opinion. So, let's do that. Let's first look at the positives. The first one being the history. There's stuff to play off from the past. This is a feud that's gone on for eight years. So framing this as their last match is a great way to put a stamp on it. I hope so. Secondly, it's a last man standing match. They haven't had a stipulation match aside from a steel cage match one on one. Mm -hmm. So this, in my opinion, brings a lot of intrigue, especially because think about it. Are they going to have Brock drop four straight to Roman Reigns? I think and hope it's a car crash and everything in sight gets broken and they end things off with a bang. Next Please. up is a big one, and one that a lot of people forget. This match draws the company money. Look at anything that involves... I know, and this is the thing. I get it. This is going to bring them money. The problem here is because they have not invested as much as the people that are on their roster to bring in money, they have to resort to this. This is only WWE's booking fault. They would have invested time and effort into the people that they have or st stop letting go to people that fans really care about maybe this wouldn't be happening maybe they wouldn't have to rely on brock and roman again but to sell that stadium they have to rely on them and to be honest with you i heard they're still having problems selling it out because it's only so many times you can see this match all these two beat on youtube or merchandise it sells. I'm not a businessman, but if they're making money, they're succeeding. Who cares if this is the 50 millionth time they're giving you this match? To them, they're making money, and yeah. that's what's important to them. Think to yourself, who are the two biggest stars that they have at their disposal right now? And there's your answer. This is the biggest match that they can possibly put on right now. Also, I think it's been blown out of proportion that this rivalry has been bad per se. I don't think it's been bad. I do think those initial stages were a time where both guys struggled to give us something of substance. I think that those initial stages in 2015, 17, and 18 
where Reigns hadn't really found his footing and Brock was basically unmotivated drags things down a lot in retrospect but since SummerSlam it's been a really good rivalry. And the final positive I have for you is with the available stars since everyone under the sun seems to be injured this seems like a contingency plan and I think that people got to remember that they were thrown into this situation because Randy got injured. Yeah. Because Cody got injured so think about it. Yeah we we know the original plan was supposed to be Randy versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam which by God sign me up I think that shit would have been fun that shit would have been oh my god that would have been fun i would have loved to have seen that match love to have seen that match and then we all know the ultimate goal definitely is cody rose it's the ultimate end goal and i hope it is still the ultimate end goal to have cody be the guy to finish this all off Maybe this I don't is know. Not what was supposed to I don't happen. Know. The original it, plan. Was- it may be a situation where Cody may just end up getting the title off of somebody else, which I'm okay with. But he may not be the guy to beat Roman. So we don't know. It's gonna be Orton versus Reigns, a match that happened all the way back at SummerSlam 2014. And if it would have happened again, that would have been really exciting and refreshing. I know a lot of us would have been all for that, and it would have yeah, been yeah. really interesting to see what Lesnar would have done if he would have appeared at all. It's insane how injuries have changed the course yeah. of everything realistically they want a big time drawing match that's going to attract and say whatever you want but like i said this is that match now that we've pulled out some positives let's look at the other side the negatives one of the things <laughs> and i've mentioned this before is that they've exhausted every part of this rivalry from the whole veteran versus young guy angle to the whole mercenary versus saving hero of the masses to the story of where Heyman's allegiance lies Every corner has been covered by this on and off feud for the past 8 plus years and what more can you do? There's only so much you can do with a story like this and instead of pivoting in directions like making it a multi-man match or having new stars in the fold, they continue to put themselves in a holding pattern. To add to that, you had Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. People had been wanting that match Mm -hmm. for ages, but instead you devalued that match Mm -hmm. and Lashley's title win, which leads me to the next con. And that's sacrificing others' championship reigns and storylines to put all your chips in this feud. At the 2022 Elimination Chamber, Brock Lesnar won the WWE title, and that brought us to a unification match at Mania 38. So basically, a world title feud at WrestleMania with someone else in that position who could have benefited from either holding or competing for a world title was sacrificed just so you could do this match again. And if you want to build a strong foundation, you can't always go in one direction. I don't think the assessment I'm giving is an unfair one. They got to move on from this. And here's the biggest problem the WWE has. All the respect in the world for Roman Reigns, but to build him up as the end all be all, WWE has sacrificed a ton of superstars and they haven't let anyone get this to his level so or even sniff true. him. It's basically Roman Reigns and everything else. And I get that. He's your top star, all the power to you. But you could find yourself in a situation like you did with Cena. When Cena was leaving, you had to strap a rocket to Roman Reigns. That's development that you could be doing now rather than hotshotting someone and having the fans potentially turn on said star like they did with Roman. Theoretically, let's say Brock was going to wrestle Gunther this year. Let's say that would have benefited Gunther big time. Meanwhile, you call up Braun Breaker, you have him run through everyone for two months. Ultimately, he ends up losing via shenanigans to Reigns. You've now built intrigue for two new stars that will help move the company forward. That's exposure and exposure is good, especially. I like what he's saying here. Because I would actually, not even going to lie to you, even though I don't like, like his name Gunther or whatever, Gunther versus Brock, that's very intriguing. That's a match I would love to see. Gunther's a heel. Brock's a babyface. Very similar builds. Bro, I would pay top dollar to see them go at it and have Brock maybe put him over? Fuck yeah. That would be great. Will WWE do it? I don't know. I don't know. When you're in there with guys like Lesnar and Reigns, and if you want to form a new nucleus of talent, that's your best way to go. Let them get acquainted with the audience rather than, all right, it's 2025, we don't have Roman anymore. Who are we going to strap the rocket to, and who are they going to boo for the next four years? Yeah. That's a problem you're going to find yourself in. They need to move on from this feud, have people slot in and out of feuds with guys like Brock and Roman, 
You can't go back and fix your mistakes. Soon those days are coming where you're not going to be able to call Cena or Lesnar and get them every summer to pop Which a rating. Which is what I be and saying. that's the negatives I pull from this. They just got to move on. They got to build up new stars or they just got to let new people come into the fold. Like I said earlier, just sit back and enjoy things. This rivalry will go down as a historic one with two of WWE's biggest stars ever. And like I said... We had Cena and Orton wrestle for what felt like every day and twice on Mondays, <laughs> and now some of us miss that. Just enjoy it. There have been points where these two have killed it. That post-SummerSlam build towards Crown Jewel in Day 1 was really well done. I like that they made Heyman look vulnerable, but everything's come in pockets. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Like I said, I'm excited for this match. As always, I want to hear from you guys. Yeah, man. This was a great video, bro. Great video. I gotta go ahead and give this one a like, man. The fact that you used our, used us as a clip to the reaction of <laughs> what happened when Brock won. Oh man, bro, that 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 was great. That was legitimately great, bro. That that I appreciate you <laughs> for using that clip, man. But uh, he makes some very fantastic, fantastic points. The feud has not always been bad, but I think we're just tired. I would be okay with this being their last match if they just go insane, tear the damn ring up, tear ringside up, destroy the whole stadium if you have to, end it in a spectacular fashion, and I'm okay with it. And no more. But it's WWE. It's all about the bottom dollar, so I don't know about that. Comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys believe this will be their last match? in wwe brock versus roman but do y'all think at some point we will get another main event with these two let me know down below i hope it's their last match but i don't put anything past wwe so i can see them having a match again probably sometime maybe even this year maybe even next year who knows i can definitely see them having another match but i appreciate all love and support bro to 90k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace